I want to start first with this data set. Talk to us about why it's been so important and so key to helping us navigate this pandemic. Good morning, and thanks so much for having me. Uh, the data set itself uh, started very early on. We were the sort of first mover in collecting information and data around the disease. And so we had a very early start. Um, that allowed us to understand the data, to understand um, how it was going to be released, the collection methodologies that we should be using. And so starting in January, when there were just a few confirmed cases in China, we were able to start tracking and start really understanding the dynamics of how information around the disease were going to be shared. And it allowed us to really grow a data program around tracking the disease um, and to really have it all in one place um, and really start to influence the design and the understanding of how we would capture the information. Um, and it and it set off um, a series of events that now obviously um, has positioned us to be that standard bearer for the data itself. And and why is it, Beth, do you think that Johns Hopkins has become, as you, as you mentioned, the standard bearer? I mean, millions of people turn to it daily. What is it that you and your team are, are focused on um, that you think has become so successful and trusted throughout this pandemic? Look, I mean, in a pandemic that has been highly politicized, um, where there is some deep tr uh, trust issues with the media, with the with the government, I think that you know we have positioned ourselves as an independent organization that's really fueled by sound research, um, paired with sound public health advice from you know leading experts in the field, um, and it's a differentiator. Uh, it's allowed us to sort of um, remain steady course. We also have been very committed. To having all this data open, uh, there's no paywall. There's no um, there's no restrictions on how to access the data. Um, all of our methods are very open, so you can see exactly how and where the data is coming from. Um, you know, we are we we uh, really share a lot of detailed information about the flow of the data, and I think it's just allowed us to continue a steady state um, that has been um, at the center of tracking for individuals like my parents who are making decisions about whether they're going to go out um, and, and wear a mask or go to the grocery store to large governments or news organizations who are sharing the information. And Beth, what, what are you and your team focused on right now? I mean, what are you taking a very close look at? I know, you know, we mentioned the vaccination efforts, but what are some of the trends that you are seeing um, right now, given your vantage point? So a few things that we're looking at, we're obviously looking at um, vaccination and the dissemination of vaccination. One of the things that's plagued our reporting and data, the use of data in response to the pandemic in general has been a real lack of standards. So here in this, in this country, you know, we're even, you know, jurisdiction to jurisdiction comparing oftentimes different data. Um, it's not reported the same. There is no um, prevailing standard. And so it's made it very difficult. So we're constantly looking at um how data is being expressed, trying to really influence the way that that happens. Um, but it's still a pretty significant issue. And it, vaccines are not um, uh, are, are also dealing with the same issue where we don't have every state reporting who's getting access to the vaccines. Um, we don't even have the same definitions for what a fully vaccinated person is in a particular jurisdiction. So we continue to navigate some pretty um, treacherous waters. Another trend that we're looking at is we've seen cases and deaths had a precipitous fall um, in, in the last month, but that's sort of evening out. Um, but one of the things that we certainly look at is testing. Um, and we're also seeing a lot less testing now that our mass te testing sites across the country have been repurposed into mass vaccination sites. Um, we're keeping a keen eye at really understanding whether or not we're getting a full picture of where the disease is. And so then, Beth, just, just wrapping up, what do you see as a legacy of, of the COVID tracking data set that, that you're managing? I mean, we're seeing a lot of states, as you mentioned, sort of have take their individual approaches to reopening. But what do you see as what you're doing? How, how is that going to influence us as we navigate out of this pandemic, hopefully at one point? A few things. I think 
public data has taken a completely new life um, in response to the pandemic. And I hope that we think about data as this asset, not just as we navigate public health crises, but as we navigate things like climate change and violence and some of the other really pressing issues. And so this sort of democratization of science that's allowed individual decisions to play out and that's also allowed um, governments to really shape public policy deeply based in evidence, um, I think is a, is a trend that we, we, ha- we now have to sort of lean towards. I also think, you know, we'll be using this body of work um, into perpetuity as we research the impact that this coronavirus has had um, and this pandemic has had as we think about our response to those um, that will come uh, in the future.